went about his business yeah. in a recent article. Can you elaborate more, you know, about that and how you uh, you help him when he uh, asks those questions? Yeah, it's just high level football conversations that we have. Um, how Tom saw the game, how Patrick sees the game, and you know, I've been fortunate enough to be surrounded by both those guys now. Um, I'm still building that relationship with Patrick, but uh, you know, Tom and I had a great one over the last three years, and you know, just seeing how Tom operated, seeing how Patrick operates. Um, I'm just kind of trying to bring ideas to kind of both sides of the table and um, ultimately help Patrick be better than he already is. Um, and he's a phenomenal player right now, but um, he's kind of an open book, an open mind um, to see how other guys play the game. Early really impressions of Noah Gray, um, what you've seen from a tight end. He's a great kid. Um, works extremely hard, quick in and out of the break, sure-handed, strong, um, eager to get better every day. He's a great target to have. Um, and the way we use tight ends in this offense, the more you have, the better. Um, you regulate defensive looks with tight ends on the football field, and Noah's been doing a great job throughout camp. When you've got the different organizations, do you have to just adjust your own preparation? You know what's worked for you to stay ready, but here yeah. with the Chiefs, is there something that you have learned that is kind of a little different or helped you or you know, just something that you've picked up? Yeah, it's a great question. Every organization is so different top-down, ownership, general manager, head coach, coaching staff, players. Um, and for instance, in Tampa, like we were a very old team. We were, I think we are the oldest team in the NFL the last few years. So coming to the Chiefs, where we're a very young team, um, there's definitely more of a leadership, old guy type of role here. I think Travis and I are the oldest guys on the team right now. And uh, I had definitely not been the oldest guy on the team because Tom was old. But um, yeah, every routine's different. Every organization's different. Personally, I try and keep my routine very similar, getting ready for practice, how I study the playbook, how I study the game plans, um, how I physically get ready for the day. But um, yeah, every routine's different. Um, so you've got to tinker with the timing of things. But for the most part, um, every organization's dialed in the way they want to do it. And you just have to come in and kind of learn that routine. Chris, you mentioned you're at, at peak volume right now when it comes to the plays that you guys are selling. How's that process been going for you? It's a lot of fun. Um, I was talking to Vahe the other day. And I've, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I've been in a lot of systems over the last 13 years. But it's refreshing having to learn a new one. Um, having to really be on your P's and Q's in the install meetings with Coach Reed because he's always asking you questions. So um, it forces you to kind of get one step ahead as the quarterback because ultimately younger players will come to you and ask you questions regardless if it's my first year in the system. So um, I want to be that kind of sounding board, that resource. So um, it forces me to get ahead, stay ahead, um, and learn it at a quick pace. Young receivers, uh, I know – I know they go to Pat often because they're trying to get those points reps. They're trying to get chemistry with him. How often do they come to you, and what is that like? It's just talking to them. You just talk through every play. So I watch Pat, Pat's play. He watches my plays. And, you know, it's a collective group effort to get everybody on the same page. Um, we all want to be seeing, saying the same thing. So um, anytime that we can kind of interject and tell the receivers, hey, this is what we saw here, do this, or this is what the receivers saw and felt, they want to do that. So. Uh, it's a group effort, a collective effort between the quarterbacks and the coaching staff. Coach has a history of, of taking players at different points in their career, and it doesn't matter if he makes them all better. Can you see why, why is that you think? Uh, first and foremost, he's a great person. Um, the biggest thing, he lets you kind of be you. Um, and as you've seen over the course of the years, he doctors the play call to a specific guy, Alex, to Patrick, Matt Moore, uh, Chad, kind of bits and pieces here the last few years. So. Um, as a play caller, the coach Reed does a great job. The coaching staff does a great job having kind of a plan for each and every guy. Um, but yeah, he, I mean, his track record speaks for itself. Um, he's a great coach. Would, how much would you have liked to play for him coming out of college? It would have been a lot of fun. Um, just the consistency that he brings, um, kind of top down, front office and his coaching staff. It's, I've seen it from afar. Uh, I saw Alex came here right after San Francisco, and then I went to San Francisco. So. Watching Alex's career here kind of take off and have a lot of success was kind of fun for me to see. Um, but yeah, Coach Reed, I mean, his track record speaks for itself. It's pretty phenomenal to watch. The eager, eagerness to learn, eagerness to make plays. Um, we're a young group. I think the vets, Quez. Um, but it's fun to see a young group of guys like that, fresh legs, eager to get out here each and every day to try and get better. There's always something they want to work on. They're always asking questions, doing extra things. You see them getting extra reps after practice. So um, having a young group of guys like that, that you can kind of mold, that they're open to coaching, open to different techniques, it's a lot of fun to see.
looking at you know Pat and these young generation of quarterbacks that are stars now, just how often you do you look back at the beginning of your own career about how you know you were the once the, that up and coming star? Yeah, it's I don't like to look back too much. It makes me kind of feel old, but. Um, we were, funny story, we were watching film, there's like a play we put in at the end of the game, and it was from 2011 in Jacksonville, and they were like, that was you at quarterback? They were like, we couldn't even see you, the film was so grainy. So that really made me feel, I was like, coming from college, I thought that film was like crystal clear and good, but they're like, we watch it now, I'm like, you can't even see me throwing the football, it was so bad, but yeah, so looking back makes me feel old, so I don't really do it that much. A lot of veterans will come here and say that this is the toughest camp that they've had anywhere when they've played other places. And they also talk about how efficient it is yeah. and how much work they get done. So how, how does it compare to some of the other camps that you've gone through? It's a great camp. I told Coach Reed yesterday, it's fun kind of going back, getting away, going to Missouri Western, kind of getting away from the normal facility. Um, it's an old school method. And, uh, you know, it's fresh. It's refreshing. It's simple. Um, you just got football to deal with. Um, but we had tough camps in Tampa. It's, I mean, any training camp's tough. It's not many camp cupcakes. Um, the weather in Tampa was, I mean, extremely hot, but uh, we put a lot of work in here. It's three days full straight pad, so um, when we're on the, on, on the grass here, it's, it's full tilt. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. How you doing? It's going good, you know, getting back in the role of things. So that's always good to be back out there. It's long. So how do you pace yourself knowing pre the first preseason game is still like 11 days or so away and you're in the dog days? No, I mean, right now we just getting, well, for me, you know, coming back off an of injury, I'm just preparing to get back fully healthy and continue to take my strides and so I could play, you know? So that's why. Coming back from a serious injury can be a long, hardest, hardest process. I, I just wondered, what, how, what were some strategies you had to stay positive along the way? Who did you turn to? Um, I think, uh, of course, they was in season. So uh, just seeing the guys come in and see me on the training tables, they encouraged me to always like keep my head up. And then I like to attack everything like a pro. So attacking it and just, um, seeing my strides when, you know, as the months come along and being able to do things that I wasn't able to do, it always made me continue to keep my head up and smile through the process. It seemed like a bunch of your teammates were celebrating when you hit the field yesterday. So how did it feel when you made that walk and saw your teammates and how happy they were? I think it took a moment to just take it all in because I've been watching for so long and uh, I never had a serious injury. And just seeing those guys, like, their reaction to it just showed that there's a family here and that I got love on the team, you know? Turk, uh, your first head coach at Missouri S&T, Tyler Fenwick, he's a head coach here now at Missouri Western first year. Um, just some really good years that you had there. Um, just what are your memories of coach and what can you say? How did he kind of help shape who you are as a person and a player? I think um, since my freshman year there, he always, uh, Coach Fenwick was a good guy. He took me in and um, I was a lighter guy but he made sure I played. And Fenwick, he, he kind of like got his own personality and he made sure I was who I am. Like, you know, he kind of shaped me. I never had a, a real head coach until I met him, I felt like. How much have you guys been able to stay in touch over the years? And what did it mean to you to be a part of that group that kind of put that program that was down on its luck, kind of put s &T on the map there? I, I stay in contact with Fenwick a lot. Um, his family always reach out to me, his kids. And uh, seeing him out here was good. He, he shake my hand all the time. And uh, when I first got up here, those first few days, I went to his office and chatted with him. Turk, someone just made about Julie, the trainer's job with Pat last year. Which trainer was assigned to you and how much did they I had Julie. Man, she's great. You know, uh, she kind of put those, put those, um, her job, she emphasizes it well. And she got me right. So, you know, I think all the things that you hear about Julie, I just say it's true. How eager are you just to go full go? Because you know Andy likes to keep guys in that rainbow period. So just I think, uh, uh, of course, you know I'm ready. Because like I said, I've been watching, and um, when I get out there, you know I'm just ready. Like for now, 
I'm taking it with stride, what they're telling me to do. But, yeah, I'm ready. You look frustrated when you, they walked you over the tent and you missed that one run those reps. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm ready to go. You know, uh, I'm tired of watching, you know. Kind of feel like a cheerleader right now. But it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, watching all the celebration last year just give you some extra motivation. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, of course, I made it to a Super Bowl with them my rookie year, and we played. We didn't get the outcome we, we wanted. And seeing them win, I'm happy for them, you know. Uh, of course, all of I know the training camp that they went through, the season ups and downs. But, and, I, I mean, they work for it. So watching it, you know, I want to go get one. I want to go play in it. Oh, best playlist. I probably go Willie Gay. Okay. Willie Gay. He kind of he mix everything in there. He got a lot of a lot of class in it. And uh, worse. Oh, worse. I don't know. I don't know about the worst. I got Willie for the best though. All right. All right. Thanks, Thank you sir. all. Thank you, Uh, they're both really good quarterbacks. Um, I don't think, I don't know. It's They're great quarterbacks, and it's fun catching from them. They, any speed-wise or anything that's different that you adjust when you're catching them off from one or the other? No, I mean, they're both very accurate. They both read the defense very well. So just, you know, got to keep your hands up out of the break every time, uh, you know, either of those guys are throwing the ball to you. Is there any reason, Lord, that you get good points while you're having some good camps so far? Uh, I think all of us are having a a really awesome camp. So it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. We got a great tight end group in there, and we're always helping each other out schematically, uh, things that we can do better out there. So um, I think just having a great group like that, and you know, keeping each other up when it's hot and humid out here, and the practices are long, uh, it's a huge benefit to that, and a huge credit out to all the guys up in the uh, up in the building up there. Now, what do you think the next step is for you this year? Um, I'm just going to keep working hard and being the best teammate that I can possibly be. Um, that's all that I think the coaches and uh, my teammates ask for me, and uh, I'm not going to try to do too much um, and just do my job. When Andy offered to maybe not have a full back this year, you mentioned your name. What kind of conversations been like maybe in playing that role and potentially you can Yeah, I'm just doing whatever the coaches ask me to do, whatever they need me um, you know, to fill that role. So uh, I'm just having fun with whatever position that they, they put me in. Um, yeah, I mean, just understanding this offense. This is a difficult offense to understand, and there's a lot of moving parts to it. So um, I think in that regard, it's uh, been a lot easier moving, you know, forward here, which has been really good. And uh, you know, I, and I'd say that's probably the biggest thing is just retaining the information, and being able to go out there and play fast. Yeah, I mean, he's always asking us a lot of questions, making sure that we know exactly what he saw. Um, but it, it's just really good having that knowledgeable of a coach that is able to teach us, coach us. He coaches every position um, the same, and it's just really encouraging to kind of have that leader uh, as our head coach. How do you feel as a blocker compared to a year ago? Just good. Um, you know, Coach Tom Melvin does a great job in individual and uh, even in meetings to make sure that we're getting our footwork right, our hands right, uh, and just being the best possible you know, overall football player, but especially a blocker. So huge credit out to Coach Tom Melvin and the other guys who are giving looks, who are working hard in practice to help us get better every single day. That's why we're out here at camp. One of the big things that you had going out of college was how short your hands were. Where did that maybe originate? Because it doesn't mean you knew that you were very good at when you were younger. Uh, you just continue working hard and you know listening to the coaches and mentors that you have in football, um, and I think that's just where it stems from. I think that's where everyone out here who 
uh, is fortunate enough to play in the NFL. Um, there's a reason why those guys are out here too. And um, you know, seeing different drills that other guys do and stuff and learning from them has just always been super awesome. So um, a lot of great guys out here that can catch the ball really good and uh, a lot of great different drills that you can do. Been around Travis now for a while. Are there things and specific things that you feel like that you've picked up in your game and kind of added to it that maybe you you now feel like maybe you play like Travis a little bit or you emulate him in some ways? Not at all. Not no, at all. No, I uh, I learn a lot from him because you know I think he's the greatest tight end to ever play the game, um, and he's an excellent mentor. I mean, he's an even better friend too. So uh, watching him out here picking his brain is always good. But you know, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey for a reason. I'm just trying to do my job to the best of my ability and. You know, not try, not try to do too much more than that. Is that an irreplaceable thing that you try to do to just make sure that you stay yourself and that you're not trying to do a Travis Kelsey impersonation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, coaches ask me to just be myself and play my game, so uh, not trying to get too ahead of myself. When you, when you do watch him as a route I mean, he's just very intelligent, knowledgeable, and he's been in the league for 10 plus years, so a guy like that sees the defenses differently. Um, and it's just really cool to see him talk through how he looks at defenses and safeties and corners and what he's thinking, um, you know, mid route. So, um, you know, getting the uh, first hand take of that every day in a meeting room, you know, has been absolutely incredible the past three years. So yeah, I was wondering if that is if that is the biggest thing you can sort of take from you is sort of seeing how the other side is reacting based on coverage and formation and down distance like more mentally than yeah, absolutely. He's a great mentor in that regard. You know, you get done a play, he's always right there to, you know, ask you what you saw and, and help you get better for the next rep. I know you uh, you won a pickleball tournament in the off season with Gary Dieter as your partner. He's proclaimed himself as the best pickleball player in Kansas City. Would you say that's accurate or is he embellishing? Uh, he's definitely not the best pickleball player in Kansas City. There's a, a lot of good pickleball players out there, but um, he is a good uh, good player and it's fun playing with guys like that in the off season. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks,